How's it going, everybody? I was doing some digging and going through some of the preparation for Service Survivor, and um, I've been following a couple of threads from the IE online community, and um, I decided to take a couple of minutes to see if I could actually make this thing work. So, as you can see on my on my desktop here behind my mom, behind my screen, I have a um, a Windows 7 PC. It's a virtual machine running inside uh, on the same physical host as all of the uh, the VMs that the the routers are. So I've got 12 CSRs and six XRV routers running. So as I was, you know, I had normally what I would do is I would go through and I would do an embedded packet capture to capture the data between two points and capture on the interfaces and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, that 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 works. Um, but I read a post today on the IEOC, and let's see if I can go find it real quick, since I've got you guys here, um, where, you pull the forms up, uh, let's see, CCIE, right here. So it says, a CSR1000V packet capture issue. Alright, so I'm going to go, I'm going to drag this over to the other monitor. So as you can see right here, it says, this particular individual has a, uh, an issue with the CSR and he's trying to see what's going on and stuff like that. So um, the, somebody made made a mention that he's got uh, a Linux box and whatnot and he's able to capture all the data through the NIC. And I'm like, how do you do that? And so basically what he did is it says right here, it says, um, I, found, I found it's much easier to just install a VM and that that has virtual NICs that support tagging, and I just captured directly from your vSwitch with the Linux box. Okay, I was like, okay. I was wondering, can you do this with Windows? And as a matter of fact, you can. And this is how you would do that. So I did a quick search for Windows 7 VLAN tagging Realtek, because that's the type of um, network adapter I have. And I found this little uh, Wireshark uh, ditty here, and I will uh, post this here. It says right here. It says, how to configure Realtek PCIe Gigabit Ethernet Family Controller to capture VLAN tag packet. So obviously with the, the VLAN t tag it goes a little larger than the actual packet. And it said, the answer to this is very simple. It says, change the priority in VLAN to priority in VLAN disabled. I'm like, oh okay, so how do you do that? So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how to do that. So we're going to go ahead and pull up our setup here, we're going to click on local area connection, you click on properties, then you click on IPv4 and configure, yes that's fine, and then you go to advanced, and you go down to uh, VLAN and priority, which is down here at the very, very, uh, prior, priority of VLAN, it's not all the way at the bottom, but close to it, and you notice how it says right here, priority and VLAN disabled, that's what I enabled, I enabled priority and VLAN disabled, and once I did that, it actually bugged out for a minute. The the, the VM came back, but I, I have console access through vSphere to get to it. So my remote desktop connection came back up. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. I'm going to relaunch Wireshark. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick little thing here. I am going to ping from R11 Site 3 to R11 Site 2. And that's going to basically, I'm going to ping through the MPLS domain. It may not take this exact path, but it's going to ping through the MPLS domain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through here. I'm going to go back to my remote desktop connection. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, click on this guy. Um, let me see which port that I want to have. Local area yeah, connection. So I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to capture. And you're going to see a lot of data going back and forth. That's okay. That's not a big deal. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab and I'm going to do this ping. I already did it once, so I know it's going to work. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do the ping again. So I'm going to ping. It does work, but then I'm going to do a trace route. And that works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to stop the capture. And then I'm going to come up here to here. I'm going to type in ICMP. Hit the enter key. 
So you're going to see a lot of stuff come in here. So I have the initial ping, and you see the trace routes. So what I'm going to do, and these are all this other data is the detail behind it. So if you don't know how trace route works, that's okay. So this is the the trace route time to live exceeded in transit. So you've got you're building out your um, uh, it's a per hop thing. So as you go through, you're going to be building out. So I'll go into more detail on how that works. So here I've got my ICMP. I'm going to click right here. This is me going from um, the, the way that I have this built out is R11 site 3 and R11 site 2 are the same router, just two different VRFs. So I've got, I've actually got two routers. Each one has six VRFs configured. And I have a dot one q trunk sitting between R11 and R3. And R, in this connection here, they go into different verfs, so they appear as different routers. So you can do the same thing with, uh, with Nexus with uh, on the 7K doing VDCs where different VDC has different ports allocated to it and it looks like a different switch. So the same thing happens with a VRF. It look, makes it look like a different router. It's a different routing table. So I was able to do that. So now I come back over here to this guy. And if I click in here and I click on this guy, you're going to see an ICMP message. This goes out and then it comes, it hits this guy and then you see the MPLS label value show up. So if we come in here, you have the ICMP it's going out to type 8 code 0, which is a request, and then you see the reply come back in. Now, if you look right here, you'll see the MPLS label. I've got MPLS coming in. This is the, uh, this would be considered to be the transport label, and this would be the, the VPN label. So this is the bottom of stack. So this is going to be basically how it boils down. And then as you look through here, you can see I have the echo reply, I have the echo re the request, and I have the reply. So I pinged from our, uh, from router 11 site 3 to router 11 site 2, and, I, and it worked. And then router 11 site 2 pinged back with an echo reply, which is a code type 0, code 0, which is the reply. And if you come down here a little further, you'll see where I did the trace route. And that was pro five pings that I did that on. So I came, I come in here. And I was able to do a ping. And if you notice, as you progress through here, that the probes, you'll see three of each. The reason why you're going to see three of each, if we look right here, you'll see that you have one probe, two probes, and finally three probes. Now, if I was to come in here and do this trace route and do question, I would type in probe and type in probe one. Notice how you'll only get one response. Now, let me go back and do this again. So if I come in here and I, I have, I got three responses from each one. That's the three probes you're sending. If I go in here and I do this capture again, continue with self saving, and I'm going to come in here and you'll notice that it's, I've got IC, an ICMP uh, filter set up here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this trace route again, but I'm going to do one probe and that information should fill up. Okay. Now, if I go back here, you'll see that I have one connection and then it goes into additional connections. So I go from the peering to, uh, what is that? Actually, I need to stop the capture because I've got other data in here that's going to get allocated. Um, it's going out 1032. Okay, so it's going the wrong direction. Um, so if we look at this, pull this back up real quick. I'm actually going the wrong direction. I should have an additional label value and I don't because um, I'm going via this path right here. There's actually a line drawn between these two. There's actually appearing here and there's appearing here for some uh, testing that I'm working on. So if we go in here on this side on R11 site 3 and we do a show run section BGP you'll see that I have two peerings to this guy. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to set a route map um, route dash map LP. I'm going to say set the local preference to be 200, and I'm going to go type in router BGP one two or uh, 65,001, and then address family IPv4 VRF R11 site three, and I'm going to say to neighbor uh, 11.33.0. three 
I'm going to say route map. Route map is going to be LP and in affects outbound traffic, out affects inbound traffic. So I'm going to say in and I'm going to do a uh, do or I'm going to say a uh, clear IP BGP star soft. I'm going to do a show BGP VPN v4 unicast all or, uh, or VRF uh, R11 site 3. So now I should be preferring the path through uh, because it's local prep because the local preference is preferred out towards um, what do you call it towards router 3 rather than XR2 my trace route should be different now. If I come back up here and I do my trace route again, my trace route should go Oh, you know what? I bet you Let's see here. Show uh, show ISIS IS neighbors. Show MPLS interfaces. Oh, that's why. Uh, interface gig 1.123. Again, it's one of those things that comes back to bite you in the butt. Um, MPLS IP and same thing with 23. I was doing some testing, that's why it broke, but I'm able to quickly identify that problem. So there it goes. Now if I do the trace route again, it adds, it adds another hop. So let's go ahead and go back to our Wireshark capture and let's go ahead and start the capture again. Continue with save, start without saving. I'm going to come back over here to this guy. I'm going to do that probe. So there we go. So it's going to pull that up. Now you'll see when I do this, I start at, I go to router 3, then I go to the connection between, I go to, let me go ahead and stop it because it's going to be pulling in additional information. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this guy up, but I'm going to break this guy down here. So what you'll see is I'm going from router 3, which is the, um, let me do this. This will help. Um, so I'm going from, bear with me here guys, I'm going from router 3 to, or router 11 site 3 to router 3, which is this connection right here. Then from router 3 to router 2, I'm going this path. Now remember the destination is um, always back to the originator because you're trying to send a TTL. So you're trying to figure out how far out it goes. Then it goes through that path and it goes 13 to 2 goes this way and then eventually goes up to XR1. So you can trace the path via that and then it gets to 11, 12 and then you get a port unreachable. And that's where this guy comes into play where you get your path this way. So it's going 10 to 3 that way across the board. So it is working. So I encourage you to check this out if you've never dealt with it before. But the beautiful thing about this is I have it set up to where I'm not stripping the dot one q header. So I'm receiving all of the information in from this vSwitch. So literally, if I was to clear this filter and just capture, continue without saving, it's going to capture a whole bunch of data, right? So now it's everything on that particular virtual machine. So I'm going to have something here like this particular packet right here is a all routers multicast for LDP. I'm setting up connection um, it's coming from XR3 and going towards everybody. And if I come down here just a touch, you'll see that I will get a response in from 1047. I'm sorry, that's a hello out. So I'm sending the LDP out and the LSR ID is XR3. The hello message has all this information in here. So I have common TLB bits and it's a targeted link, it's a link hello, which means it's connected to, directly connected to its neighbor. It is, this is the FEC, so it's an IPv4 transport, and the vendor TLV is, it says it's unknown, but it's Cisco at the end of the day. So there's several different aspects of this that you need to be familiar, familiar with, and these are where those uh, attributes come into play. So if you understand how the operations work, this will give you an insider's view. So now if I come back in here and I, now I'm still capturing, I don't know if you guys can tell that or not, but um, we are in the, you know, it's, it's continuing to capture. So if I come in here and I ping, if I ping in here, 
you're going to see a bunch of ICMP. It happens so fast that you don't see it. Now, if I come in here and type an ICMP, you're going to see a bunch of stuff at the bottom now show up. You're going to see the request and the reply going from XR3 or from uh, router 11 to, so here's here's the ping request, here is it going out, and then you'll see in here a little further along, we'll have the MPLS headers, and so everything's working the way that it needs to be. So that's how you go about doing that. I hope that this was informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.